another good thing about Arizona, you can register basically anything you want and drive it on the road. <laughs> they yeah. do not care. Be- I've seen a YouTube video, I kid you not, a Tumblr. A Tumblr like A Batman Tumblr, Tumblr from Batman with the jet engine <laughs> and the cops came up just to get a picture with it. There's a reason. Whereas that- in California, they're like, mm, your car's awfully loud and we have like Batmobiles <laughs> on the road. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Buzz Bros Podcast. I'm Mason Bows. I'm Jordan Bows. I'm Logan Bows. And I'm Kier Bows. All right. And we will just jump right in to our discussion segments, starting off with the news. Uh, the first one we got is from Stellantis, which I know this has been said before, but Stellantis sounds like a pill you have to take twice a day. Uh, ask your doctor if Stellantis is right for you. <laughs> Call your doctor if, if your heart is healthy enough for Stellantis. <laughs> If it doesn't wear off in six hours. Yeah, exactly. Um, So the big news from two weeks ago uh, was the 2024 Dodge Charger reveal. Uh, There's a few trims, and there's actually been more conflicting information. I've read from Car and Driver, from Motor Trend, and uh, some of this information is conflicting, and I'll I'll mention that. So there's the Daytona coming out first, and the Daytona trims are the electric propulsion trims. And when you, uh, when you option it, you can option for the RT or for the scat back. Now they have the same engine, they have the same battery size, they weigh the same, but they have two different power outputs. Um, then they have the six pack, which is coming, which is a standard output, uh, inline twin turbo V uh, twin turbo inline six. And then there's a high output of the same engine. And the part that's confusing is that they're saying that the four door version is only available with the standard output. The two-door version is only available with the high output. But then, um, it, depending on which outlet you read, some of them say that you could get the four-door or the two-door in any configuration of any propulsion. And some of them say the electric is getting two-door and then the gas is getting four-door. It seems like... It wouldn't surprise me if that wasn't finalized yet. If they don't Either they don't know or they were terribly unclear with the option. Yeah. And no one's buying that thing right this second, so you're right. It probably doesn't matter that much. I so the EVs... Sorry, what? Uh, it, Stellantis is like Chrysler Fiat. I mean, yeah. I'm just way out of the loop yes. on this. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so Stellantis is a conglomerate. Um, I can't even remember all the ones that are in it. Uh, but it's a huge conglomerate of uh, European companies and uh chrysler and i think a couple of asian companies um but yeah so the the stella platform which is what the the charger is on is the stella large platform they have they have the compact mid-size large and then truck platform and this is the large platform and it better be because this thing is huge while we're still on the topic of powertrains can i just say i love that they brought the name six pack back it it's great. I like the six pack name. And they ha- it was sitting there waiting to be used. It was just I'm about to get like deep into these into these powertrain numbers. Okay. What did but six, I, what did six pack used to mean? Because I thought I'll take really this one. Wrong. Go ahead. I'll VAs. take this. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually didn't know this until I was shopping for classic Mopars. I'm like, why does everyone want a six pack? Like, who would want a, a V6 in a classic? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a V6. Yeah. It stands for these uh, six barrel, or uh, sorry, two barrel, it's like three double barrel carburetors that go on their V8 engines. So you can get oh, a Oh, is that why they were like long and like oblong yes. shape? That's exactly So why. there were six of them and you can get it on the 340, you can get it on the 440. And yeah, it was, uh, so you, so a 440 six pack. So sometimes so you refer to badge, the carburetor. You're referring to the carburetor. However, the yeah. ones optioned with a six pack will often come with other things, suspension component differences right. it's, or it's a racing configuration. A sport. Yeah. So, so having like the, the six pack, it's like pack. having the SRT where it doesn't yeah, where it doesn't just include the engine upgrade, it only includes mm-hmm. a handful of other things. That's um, kinda cool. Yeah. So six pack like But this one's like a lot less fun. This one's just like it just means six. Yeah, but it's such stones. a clever way to get oh. people like dad on board <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> this, i have a question about this pack. because going to the going to the next slide for me is the specs and performance mm-hmm. so the rt has 
mirrors makes no difference, 500 horsepower. Right. <coughs> now, you'll, you'll know that the outgoing RT has 380, 385, mm-hmm. 30, depending 30. on the configuration. So we'll say it has 100 plus more horsepower. But here's the interesting part. The RT is a 340, 340 kilowatt hour battery. Which or sorry, three, 340 kilowatt kilowatts of uh, power. Again, can I say that I love that it's a 340? <laughs> it is a 340, and then the scat pack's a 440. For those that don't know, 340 is, we used to measure, especially American engines, in cubic inches. So uh, 340 was a, a very popular V8 engine selection. It, they put it in the Charger, they put it in the Challenger, the CUDA, my CUDA has a 340. And then the larger scat pack configuration is a 440 uh, kilowatt battery pack, right? No, it's a 440 kilowatt output of power. Output, okay. And yeah, 440 was also a large, that actually the largest displacement engine that they put in those cars. The reason it bothers me though, is that they picked those numbers for marketing and not because that's what it performs at. That means that there's no way that they they just got lucky and that the motor happens to top out at 440 kilowatts. That means it can do more than that and they tone it down for exactly. marketing. And the other problem is that they're the same motor. They're the same battery pack. The only difference in performance between these two cars, probably 10 plus thousand dollars difference, is software. Where they, whether or not they let you use the whole amount of power in the When market. you say motor, you're talking about like the electric, electric motors, motors two, attached to them. Two electric motors, yes. Okay. So the Stella large platform was designed with electric motors in mind. You uh, you can get a, up to three electric motors in the Stella large platform. This has now, two. This has two electric, only at the rear? One, one, one at the rear and one at the front. front. They're all wheel drive. Yeah. Okay. I thought I'm not very technically inclined, but I thought that each electric motor was associated to like each wheel. So in the Rivian, some the cars said like yes. So there's a couple of cars that are like that, but that's very that's high end, very premium trim. Yeah. So the uh, offer that's not bargain bin, Charger Daytona. <laughs> that no, not not the not the bargain bin, probably eighty grand Charger. No. I thought that I thought it was called the three forty because that was the amount of months that they get financed for. Yes, <laughs> that was yeah exactly. The so, 440, yeah, is, is even even longer. Though, but that's not even the part that I'm excited about. If you looked at a car guy and you said you can have a fully electric car with more horsepower, but it's slower, or you can go step down two cylinders and get two turbochargers. What muscle it, car guy is going to go cheaper. for? I and, guarantee you, it's cheaper, and it's going to be way cheaper. And lighter, Way probably, cheap. actually. Yeah, so oh, actually... We'll get to that. Moving moving on to the next slide. This is... I did the calculations on horsepower per ton of all of these vehicles. And I have some interesting stats for you. The Charger Daytona is supposed to weigh 5,800... That's the electric one. That's the electric one. 5,838 pounds. A.K.A. approximately it's, one it's, dump truck. No, this, this is more than the long wheelbase Escalade. Yeah. If my pickup, if you put a thousand pounds of rocks in the bed of my pickup truck, it would still weigh less than this. That's wild. Isn't that <laughs> mind blowing? Okay, it has one hundred seventy horsepower per ton. And you go, okay, what does that number mean? Well, the that's the RT. The old RT, the one that you owned, the five point seven, one hundred and seventy two horsepower per ton. So it has less horsepower compared to how much weight it has to lug around. Exactly. It has less horsepower per ton than an RT from 10 years ago. I love that you measured it in Miatas. Actually, it is measured in Miatas. It has, uh, the Miata has <laughs> 158 horsepower per ton. It only has 12 more horsepower per ton than a Miata. How many is that in Bratz? What in Bratz? I don't know. Hold on. What, I've what got a notebook. That? I've got a notebook around here. They've got it at the, what like, the back. What does the Bratz have? Like you know? 70 horsepower? Yeah, at the back they have like a conversion chart for yeah. Bratz. Yeah. Exactly. What's the it's ratio like really faces the stars? Yeah. That's the RT. How does the scat pack line up? Scat pack's not so bad. 229 horsepower per ton. Okay. Because it has significantly more power, but it weighs the same as the other uh, Daytona. But this is only seven more horsepower per ton than the outgoing scat pack. The outgoing scat pack has 222 horsepower per ton. Now, horsepower per ton is not the whole story because... No, and I want to get to that. Okay. The issue is area under the curve. 
you know what a hor uh, horsepower torque curve looks like. I'm sure you'll put it up like right here in the video, but I won't and just make you look silly. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, he's just going to be holding like a sandwich. So you have a big curve and it starts fairly low on the graph. It peaks and that's the horsepower number that the vehicle's rated at. And then it trails off. And then, of course, you would shift and you start back down here and lower RPM and it goes back up. So, so when, when they say a car has 400 horsepower, it doesn't have 400 horsepower the entire duration you're pressing the accelerator. Right. You have it 400 horsepower for like that much a time. window usually just before the car shifts is right. when it's well, unless it's an electric car that's the key electric electric car. Car. so we, if you were to talk about the total power output or work potential of a car you would talk about all of the area underneath that curve now when you're talking about an electric car that is a straight line across at its peak horsepower that means the entire graph below that line is that total area now if you t take a cutout of that horsepower torque curve all of the extra space above the curve is the is the difference in work potential of an electric car electric car rated at 400 horsepower is going to perform like a gas car rated at 500 horsepower or more yeah our our tesla has 300 foot pounds of torque 300 horsepower and it, it, it they rate them the same well and i've raced you in my charger which has a hundred horsepower on that a hundred horsepower and more it it walked away like you were standing yeah, still. Exactly. Not to mention you were spinning your tires. But that's the other part of it too, is these are now all the drive. Yeah. Which for a scat pack, that's about the limit. And they, they did not put good tires on those vehicles from the factory. So you you know all, all the horsepower in the world. It doesn't matter if you can't actually get the power to the ground. Yeah, but they weren't actually designed to go fast. They were designed to turn your dollars into smoke. Yeah. Question. So what is the name about uh what is the name of the like totally ridiculous uh exhaust system on the oh, electric the one no the fret, the fret sonic. sonic yeah the fret sonic yeah, exhaust. Exhaust. some like made up sounding i would buy the six pack just to not have that feature i would buy the six pack too i i saw the video of them like pulling in and they all acted like it was so cool and it was like it was like the it sounded like dory when she's like trying to speak whale you know <laughs> it sounds horrible <laughs> You know what? I was one of the people that I was like, that's cool. They made like, they, they're they amplifying the sound of the motor. I thought, they're trying, man. They're really yeah. trying. They're, yeah. I do it's... kind of feel bad for, they're like, okay, you can keep making muscle cars, but they have to be electric. And it's like, well, muscle cars have V8s and they're loud. And electric cars are neither of those things. <laughs> yeah. Lexus has a, um, has a feature in one of their upcoming evs i want to say i don't know if it's an ev I, I believe it's lexus it might have been something else um where you like shift it like simulates shifts yeah that's, and uh i think it's it's, yeah, it's, it's the pointless. uh it's the hyundai ionic 5 gt is that what it is yeah, yeah. some something and but, they're, uh, they're even gonna they're toying with the idea at least i heard speculation that they're going to put in an actual manual gear shift in what in their uh, EV. In the EV. In the EV? Yeah. 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 I don't know. They I, should some, just... I, need, I need some time yeah. to think about that. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. But you know what? Um, there was a reason that we called cars horseless carriages at first. Mm -hmm. Because what? where were we coming from? Yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so I should put a manual on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> shove, shove it somewhere and just start... Right. wiggling it around so why would you pick the six pack over the daytona other than it's cheaper <clears throat> we know how much the daytona weighs yes and just some back of the envelope math i'm probably going to be off by 100 pounds here and there but we know the daytona is 5800 pounds we Assuming know the outgoing charger, charger is about 4300 pounds 43 and four, change. yeah well i i just figure 4400 pounds now, knowing that it, that the new one is going to be bigger in every dimension, even the two-door version is going to be bigger in every dimension, um, we can assume it's going to probably weigh more than the outgoing one, even with a gas powertrain instead of electric. So, Sorry, you're at 300 pounds for the engine, transmission, and associated ICE components? Is that the difference between the old one and the new one? Or are you saying that those components, I'm pretty sure they weigh more than Oh, I haven't gone there yet. Right? Oh, okay. I do know 
uh, someone mentioned this, that the Hellcat motor uh, is well over 800 pounds. Over 800 pounds for the Hellcat yes. motor. Big old iron block with a big old supercharger on top, 800 pounds. I'm pretty sure the Hurricane engine's an aluminum block. Yes, and it's only three liters compared to, and there's no supercharger. supercharger. There's no, no there's like turbos, 80 but... pound sur- supercharger on it. Yeah. yeah. So this is my conservative estimate. I think the six pack's going to come in at 4,500 pounds because the battery alone, the 100 kilowatt hour battery, is 1,300 pounds. Okay, removing 200 pounds for getting rid of one of two motors now. Mm -hmm. Um, 100 pounds removing the battery management system, the controllers, the wiring. Um, Add back in 300 pounds for swapping an electric motor for a gas motor and exhaust and gas tank and fuel Mm -hmm. um, and other associated ice components and a transmission. So throw back in 300 pounds in the comparison between one electric motor and a gas engine and all of its components. So, and that's how I got to my 4,500 pound curb weight. I'd say that that's probably quite right. Oh, we're going to need some kind of write out for that to make sense. Yeah. Um, so I know that a lot of these car companies have to meet emissions and efficiency standards as an organization. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Chrysler in like four or five years will electrify enough vehicles that they can bring back the V8? I hope so. No. <laughs> No, the, it's dead. the days of the V8 are gone. Yeah, I, I we'll get to this later. People are souring, well, maybe not souring, but the hype around EVs is definitely cooling. Yeah, both from a consumer standpoint and manufacturers like I think Toyota. these things are really expensive to make. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, and repair. I want, you, I want you to finish your point. So we talked about the weight to power of the Daytona. Yeah, and, just to recap, the Scat Pack, and you talked about. The power and estimated weight of the six pack. How does that compare? Power to weight ratio. Power to weight ratio. The six pack standard output has, I'm estimating, 187 horsepower per ton compared to the Daytona RT that has an extra 70 plus horsepower is at 170 horsepower per ton. So an extra 17 horsepower per ton on top of the Daytona RT, which will probably cost, I wouldn't be shocked at double. Yeah. Um, so you get more horsepower per ton and lightness begets and the high, it's better at everything. And the high output probably doesn't weigh a whole lot more than the standard output. Uh, no, it's probably going to be a tuning difference. It's going to be a tuning difference, uh, maybe a camshaft difference. Maybe a couple different, couple different components. Um, they probably do... Um, Forged rods instead of cast rods. Maybe, a couple of things like that. But no, maybe like a more robust transmission, though. Could be, but we're gonna, we're going to assume roughly the same. Pounds. I mean, we're yeah. we're at, at, uh, roughly estimating as it is. So <clears throat> we're going to assume that. Did they say if the, the six pack comes with a manual? They didn't say they didn't it didn't. Say, yeah, they didn't say that it was uh, automatic only. Not <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if it was automatic only. But dude, because the outgoing it, charger is right. If it's I'm a manual, going. that's that's a nail in the coffin for the electric one. If it is, yeah. So well, well this I is... think they would have said if they had developed a transmission for this vehicle. Uh, I I don't think they're that. Honestly, if you asked Tim Kaniskas a year ago, he would have said they're not even making a nice version of this car. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think they're that far along. There's a reason this car isn't coming till later in next year. They're just not that far along with it compared to the electric version. So I don't even know if they made a decision on the transmission yet. Yeah. Well, but is it, it's a new platform, so it's not like they could transplant the existing manual no. that's in the Challenger into this, right? Like no, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. And so to recap, as... RT, the electric version, 170 horsepower per ton. Scat yeah. Pack, electric, electric, 229 horsepower per ton. Six Pack, a gasoline car. Standard output is 187 horsepower per ton, which is uh, noticeably more than the RT. Right. And then the high output is 247 horsepower per ton, which is 18 more than the Scat Pack electric one. So, and I did a little bit of extra math, which is that in order for the high output hurricane to be as obese as the Daytona Scat Pack, 
in terms of horsepower per ton, it would need to weigh 4,855 pounds. And I don't see that happening. No, that's like Bentley weight. And yeah, that's like, gosh, that's only, that's a thousand pounds less than the Daytona. Yeah. Does the two, does the two door version have a shorter wheelbase than the no. four door version? Same wheelbase. Same wheelbase. So it's just like yeah. a grand coupe. Yeah. And that's, I, I kept looking at it. That's the problem with the two door. I was like, I like it, but at some angles it just changes. And I don't like it all of a sudden. I can't figure it out. It's not proportioned right for a two door. It actually looks better as a four door, in my opinion. Mm. I disagree right. completely. The only problem is that the doors are too long, so they need to have scissor doors. Yes. <laughs> scissor doors make everything better. Yeah. I. What do you guys think about my math there? Am I completely off base? We're going to find out. I mean, we know the horsepower numbers, and we know the weight of the existing car, and we know the weight of the electric version, so it's going to be between. It's going to be more than the existing car. It's Maybe. gonna be. It's gonna be at least the existing car's weight. It's definitely gonna be considerably less than the electric version. It's going to be at least as good horsepower per ton. I would have to like go digging deep in my brain of like calculus that I took ten years ago and then get it all wrong anyway. But again, so, go ahead. Logan. With the with the wheelbase being the same length, like when you get in the back of a Charger today, like it's pretty roomy. Yeah. back there does that mean that there's going to be a two-door version and there's just going to be this whole chasm basically behind the driver the doors are pretty passenger. long so i mean it yeah, just so means it's, like, it's really pretty easy big to back there yeah I, I hope it's like the uh Aston Martin, or not Aston Martin, uh the koenig sig regera i saw that where the it's, massive it's doors. either there was one door but it opens up both the front and back seat yeah that's mm, cool that would be interesting but it's I think not. it would probably at least partially open the back seat, and then you still have to scoot the front seat forward a yeah. little bit. And like, you can't but I've sat in the back seat of a Mustang, and it's like it's tight. That's no, not yeah. happening. In most yeah. two doors, the edge of the door gets pretty close to the wheel well, the rear wheel well. Uh, if yeah. you look at it on the Cuda, on the existing Challenger, it gets pretty close. That gap between the wheel well and the back of the door, it's huge. It's big, and it's that's like what I think looks so weird about it. Yeah. All right. I want to move on to the Rivian announcement. All right. Okay. Let's talk Rivian. So Rivian, they expanded their lineup. Okay. okay. Um, so there's basically three vehicles that got announced. So there was, uh, it was the R2 announcement, which is like a two-part announcement, which is announcing the new vehicle, the R2, and announcing the new platform. So this is their um, like mid-size crossover all the way down to like subcompact crossover platform. So um, they don't have the same like ladder that other companies do. Because if you look at like Toyota, they've got like, I don't know if the Venza is still around, but they've got like the RAV4, the Venza, the Highlander, the Forerunner, the Land Cruiser, and the Sequoia. So they've got like, and I, there's probably a couple that I don't not even mention, but there's like nine. Yeah, the, the Lexus is the same way. There's the Corolla Cross. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, Rivian doesn't have that. So Rivian is expanding their lineup downward. So they have the two flagship vehicles, the R2, or sorry, the R- R1T and the R1S. And then they've got the R2 platform. And then the announcement is supposed to be just the R2. And then they sort of, you know, did the Steve Jobs thing. They said, like, one more thing, brought out the R3. There wasn't actually a lot of leaks around the R2. Pretty much everybody knew it was just going to be a a parsed down R1S. Um, But it seemed like nobody knew that the R3 was going to be like displayed, and and then the R3X, which is sort of the really off road focused, super high output um, vehicle. So it's supposed to have the output of the R2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The output yeah, of the R2 triple motor. Are a significant, yeah, triple motor and a significantly smaller package. Yep. And then the R2 is supposed to MSRP for 45000 So our yeah. Rivian stock right now is like $10. I've been buying Rivian stock for the last like week. Have you, been, have um, you seen the, how much money they're bleeding? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Um, Do you know how much they're bleeding? I was telling Mason this earlier. Uh, how much? Over a billion dollars a quarter. Yeah, I'm gonna buy more. No, keep buying. Uh, that, yeah, I'm gonna keep buying 
R I V N. Um, <laughs> stonks. I like the stock. What can I say? I like the stock. Um, so, a couple of the notes that I put in here. So, R2 is slated for 2026. There's no T variant. Which is interesting, because like the smaller form factor trucks seem to be kind of popping off. You have like uh, the Ford Maverick, uh, the Ford Ranger, um, that Hyundai Santa Cruz. Um, so an R2T maybe is interesting, but that's not a, that's not announced. It's really coming after that like mid-sized crossover segment. So on the gas side, think of like what would be like uh, the. Uh, BMW X3, I think, is around that size, and then the Hyundai Santa Fe, and then uh, obviously like the Model X, Model Y, uh, Mach E. Those are all around that same size on the on the EV side. Um, but I think it's brilliant. I think the R, like, if you think about, and then the one car I really want to talk about is the Rav4. Like, I think that the R2 could just come in and steal the Rav4's milkshake because. When you think about who this is marketed at, like think of like Colorado Springs based or like West Coast sort of like like tech hipster kind of Bernie bros like myself, right? Um, like they love the Rav4, especially the Rav4 Prime. Yeah, and the R1S is just too big for um, and too expensive. Francisco. <laughs> for for San Francisco and for you know the, Berkeley the R3, or Colorado the R3 Springs, yeah. For San Francisco. Yeah, but the R two priced at forty five thousand, you know, I think it's brilliant. A couple yeah. things also. Well, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Here's how I know personally that these new smaller ones, especially the R three, are going to do particularly well. Uh, Kira really likes them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like yeah exactly. Stuff. It's and like that's when it's you like the... when you can grab the attention and approval of just the core buying demographic of cars. Middle aged where... housewives. Yeah, women are yeah. women are eighty percent of the decision makers in car purchases. You know that really eighty percent. Mm. So, well, seventy nine and a bit. Basically, eighty percent of car purchases. Um, are done by or the dis- final decisions made by one. Well, yeah, I got the that's wife true. and then the children demo. So that makes sense. That's evidenced on Facebook Marketplace. I've seen a few ads where guys just put like, "Ask your wife before you text me." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is horrible but hilarious. Um, but one little note I wanted to talk about. So I got some photos here we can scroll through. Um, but that tailgate window it rolls down really cool. like a Grand Wagoneer. It's yeah, so cute. Like, a, like the old school Grand Wagoneers, the, the tailgate window rolls down. And then they got rid of the Bluetooth speaker, um, but they replaced it with a double uh, glove box. And then... The Bluetooth speaker you're referring to is the removable yeah. one that charges in place and it acts as a speaker in the car when you're driving around. Everyone's so sad. Yeah, I don't know if it actually is the speaker in the car when you're driving. I don't no, know that, but the, I do... Uh, <clears throat> the... R- R1T and R1S. Yeah, but the other car that has that before them is the Gladiator. The Gladiator oh, has I didn't a, a waterproof that. speaker you can option it with, and it's just a speaker in the side of the car, and you just pop it out and bring it with you. I mean, how many people really use that, though? Yeah, like, let's be honest. Um, what happens if you leave it behind? How much does that cost to replace? Oh, my gosh, I couldn't imagine. If you, look at the, uh, if you look at the second photo, you can see the, uh, the camping attachment. That looks Definitely so cool. someone's going to... Airbnb that and charge fifty dollars in that. Well, do you put it on a churro or do you put it on Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> what you do is is you rent it as an apartment in San Francisco with a parking space. Gosh, I mean the yeah. parking spaces were like. I mean, you could double dip, work. and you can have one family renting it as a car and another. Family <laughs> renting it as an <laughs> Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> All right. you, well, you, you want an Airbnb um, where you always wake up in a new place? Yeah. Yep. Um. And, and then they have a double <laughs> double glove box now. I thought that was interesting. I, I, if you got the space. Maybe man. I'm just, yeah, I was just like, is there not a better way to use this space? You know, I don't know. I um, mean, my minivan has double glove box. Does it really? Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I might even have a third other. glove box. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have one on top and one on bottom. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so um, it's just funny that they're like next to each other. Yeah, basically the same um, size. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. His and hers, guys. Yeah, it's and cool. Hers. It's cool. Um, well, like both those would be yours, and I get the door pocket. <laughs> if it's proportioned the same way our dressers are. <laughs> yeah, and the bed probably. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what I got on the uh, the R the R two. The other thing I'd say with the R two is it's basically just a shrunk down. R1S. So if you look at the, I do love the little tail light. light. The tail light's cool. I hope I see yeah. we see more of that. Like in cars coming forward, it's really cool. It's a very like yeah. EV thing. Is the full length. So it's like, kind of just like an EV Bronco. The like, top. The, yeah, the one at the story. top. The third. The third light is cool. Um, and so, if you check out their website, there's some other stuff that's interesting. Um like uh, attachments that attach to the rear i didn't put those in because those might be kind of vaporware you know mm-hmm. um I'm but anyway so the r3x isn't vaporware no, that's the, the first one away though yeah. yeah it's gonna be i think they said end of 2027 which means well that no there's no date there's no yeah. date it's just no, in okay. the future sometime after 2026 r3 or r2 is end of 2026 and then R3 and R3X, as far as I know, have just been announced as after that at oh, some okay. point. <clears throat> so I got I got a little more information here and a couple uh, prompts. So a smaller form factor, possibly world's first EV hot hatchback, maybe. Um, it's not, though. Uh, I know. That might be. Con- yeah. It's a sub, subcontact, some com- subcompact SUV, you know. Um, Oh, sorry. Okay, so one thing I really like about it is that it has the semi-split gate. So it's not a split gate like an old Land Cruiser where, like, the top half opens and then the bottom half you can sit on. Mm -hmm. It is a hatch, but the rear window you can lift up independently. And so there's a photo of that with, like, yeah, somebody's got, like, their surfboards going in there. Yeah. Or home projects, I think they kind of... I'm, like, 99% sure is a render. It's good. Um, I think most of these are renders. Um, Yeah. But yeah, it's it's really cool, and then you have the uh, the R three X has all of its sort of uh, orange um, accoutrement. What do you what do you call that when it's like uh, accents? The accents, but uh, there's a uh, there's another word for it. I won't think of it, but anyway, yeah, it's got all the kind of orange accents and things like that. And the interior is really cool. I think it's, it's really cool. It's made out of all these cool right. like I speckled, like recycled lot. materials. Dark yeah. Teal. Didn't they say it's like eight, like sixty or eighty percent, like recycled ocean plastics? The headliner is, yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought they just said the headliner, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the whole interior. I like that the CEO was in all like the promo videos. Yeah, it looks. I was, <laughs> this is exactly what I was thinking. Of, <laughs> yeah, was the GTI. Yeah. It's Mark One. Yeah. yeah, it's just like the, uh, twice the a rabbit. Week. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep. The, the first the launcher. Was, I'm pretty sure I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure it was under a thousand kilograms. Yeah, no, you could probably fit this car between the wheel, like in fully. The, yeah, yeah, between the wheelbase. You could probably fit it underneath. The <laughs> so, what do you think about like them expanding downward more? I thought, you know, into their ethos, they could maybe release like an e-bike. Like when I lived in Hawaii, e-bikes were huge, and like that would be something that they could probably integrate into their vehicles. You know, first party. But like, what do you think? Like other vehicles that they could come out with later? They'll probably run into the same problem as boosted boards ran into, which is the total size of that market is actually fairly small. Um, mm. Boosted boards ran into the problem of making good quality products that didn't go bad, and then they basically sold them to everyone in the country that would buy one. GoPro is the same way. Exactly, and they they yeah, you know, boosted GoPro. boards were in business. No, really, like you have a hard time convincing a person, like the average person that they need a GoPro. Like there are people that have mm. a GoPro, but then why do they need additional GoPro products after that? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the problem. The GoPro, days, but... well, I was going to say GoPro could always push a software update over the air to have the GoPro run worse uh, to preserve the battery, you know? Like Apple? And that might get, yeah. <laughs> might get people to buy some more. Just do a Tim Apple move. Yeah, um, John Apple. So the um, so the the problem I see with going smaller than the R three, there's actually this area of it's sort of a no man's land of EVs, um, and depending on your ability to make it efficient and 
how efficient the motors are and aerodynamics and all that, it, that no man's land actually appears in different spots for different uh, companies. And what I mean by that is you can have a good, efficient, small car like a Model 3. That's fine. And you can have a longer range, bigger SUV because it's, you can put a honking big battery pack in it. But there's this area in between where it gets big enough that the efficiency drops, but you can't fit a big enough battery pack to make it go mm. uh, a long enough distance. So if you're if you're a company like Tesla and you're really good at this, you can put a car in any category. But my thought is that Rivian's going to have to get really good at efficiency to put that R3 into production. And if they go even smaller than that, I don't see how that's happening. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's it for that segment. Um, you know, all EVs are good. Nobody's releasing any bad ones right now. Um, uh, so. Disagree. <laughs> Why do you think there's a, a bad EV right now? Fisker Ocean. <laughs> Why this right here? Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Is that what your topic is? It's the Fisker Ocean. Speaking of the Fisker Ocean. <laughs> I'm sure Logan was setting that up on purpose. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that was uh, on the next slide. My segment is uh, Fisker may be in trouble. Fisker, I hardly know her. You've <laughs> been waiting two weeks for that. <laughs> Michael, so, uh, Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> as I was corrected in our last episode, um, this is a different Fisker. We don't have to get into the different names and what company belongs to what. This is, is this, the, is the Ocean their first vehicle? Okay, at least in the United States. I know they're like a, they a UK based operation? No, Fisker is California. Okay. Yeah. So the Ocean is a fully electric crossover SUV Model Y competitor, and it's in the 40 to 50K range, depending on options. Deeply in that no man's land. Yeah. On paper, it seems like a perfectly appropriate little EV crossover. Like, it looks nice, good looking car, has good range, good power, good uh, acceleration. Um, Sure, looks perfectly fine on paper. Nothing wrong with it superficially. Uh, a notable tech slash automotive reviewer got their hands on it um, and found a number of flaws, mostly on the software side, to be fair. So MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, reviewed the product. And Fisker, from my understanding of the situation, was originally going to send him a Fisker, uh, but backed out. And Marquez actually had to go to a Mitsubishi dealership of all places to get one. <laughs> yes. It's the island of lost toys. <laughs> yeah. Just goes to show Mitsubishi sells everything but Mitsubishi's. <laughs> <laughs> They've got like a smart 4-2 yeah, and then yeah. like a Fisker Ocean. So evidently Fisker found out that Marquez got the car from this dealership and asked him not to review it. Um, which is... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what color is more concerning than red as far as flags go, but... <laughs> so they found out, asked him not to review it. They said it's because they had a big update coming out and they wanted his review to capture everything after the update. Now, his philosophy is this car's been on sale and regular people are driving it. It's a consumer product. It's not a pre-release thing. He hasn't signed a non-disclosure like he's going to badmouth them because this is like pre-release software. Like This is a product that real people have bought with real money in our driving and he's going yeah. to review it as is and he fairly said i will list what they plan to fix supposedly at the end of the video but i have the product now i'm reviewing it now because anyone else can buy it and this is what they can expect if they buy it today and i'm reviewing it today so the video is called to give you an idea how the review went it's called quote this is the worst car I've ever reviewed. <laughs> that was the name of this video. Um, to be fair, the title maybe seemed like a little bit of hyperbole because at the end, he did seem fairly complimentary of the car, but there were a lot of issues on the software side of things. Well, he reviewed like the Rimots Nevera. Like he doesn't review like the Mirage, you know? Yeah, he doesn't, like, he doesn't review uh, consumer cars that much. He does a lot of EV and high-end cars. Yeah. To be to be fair, he's like been doing this a really long time, and he is. Re there's a reason he has like 20 million subs. Like he's really, really fair. So like, yeah. 
I feel like his his opinion on this sort of thing was so unfortunately for because Fisker. Because of that, oh, immediately no, following Fisker. his review, um, the stock price took a hit because there's this bubble of people, affluent, tech centric um, individuals who are more likely to know of and respect the opinion of Marquez Brownlee. And that's the, the, you're striking the heart of the base that will buy this car, right? And no wonder they asked him not to, right? They know that. I mean, you can watch his video <laughs> if you want to see the exact detail of like what he- what And it wasn't was scathing. I actually thought the, no. the title wasn't that accurate, like you were saying. It was a little bit of hyperbole. But I mean, it could very well be the worst car he's reviewed. So yeah, well, that doesn't I mean, the mean first it's... car he was reviewing was a Lamborghini Huracan and a 750S. Right. And... So, or 720S. I mean, it's probably accurate. The worst car he's reviewed, sure. Probably not the worst EV ever made. Um, but regardless, that doesn't matter. People don't, you know, look into that. Um, so on top of this, they're having trouble making deliveries. They've um, been producing quite a few vehicles, but they're having trouble actually delivering them. And... <laughs> News got out that this is like as of two or three days ago, uh, that Fisker has hired financial advisors in a law firm, which are strong signals that they might be looking at bankruptcy. Uh, the stock, and then following the news of that, their stock dropped more than 50% following oh the news. <laughs> yeah, now it rebounded a bit. By the dip. By the- yeah. Um, and to be fair, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, the entire EV sector has weakened like over the last year or so. Like <clears throat> Consumers and manufacturers alike are just not as interested in EVs as they have been. You know, EVs have been, to be fair, on this like straight upward trajectory for several years. They've been riding finally, the Tesla coattails is what it is. It's and finally cooling. The lack of Tesla's refreshes was working in their favor because the resale value of all their cars stayed really high because there was no new one to go get, right? You could buy any year and it's fine. But now their cars are starting to look a little bit stale. And that on top of, you know, Elon Musk controversies that he can't stop stepping in, which, I mean, more power to him. I don't care. But some people do. Um, And as a result, the total Tesla skyrocketing has cooled and the entire EV market operates on the back of Tesla. So that's what I'm on with Fisker. Me personally, I hope they figure it out. I hope they stick around. I think it's a good looking car. I personally wouldn't buy it, but I don't know. I hope they figure it out. I want to. I want to see him succeed. But I have a question. So, could you imagine buying a used one, and like <laughs> the salesman is like, "Oh, sorry, they've already used three hundred and sixty-four of the lane overtake boosts, oh, so yeah. you only get a hundred and thirty-six of them." Just doesn't you want to explain what that is, Mason? <laughs> it's so dumb. so. My understanding is so Dodge actually has something like this, like called the Power Shot. Yeah, in their sure. vehicles, where it basically lets your electric vehicle use more than... Uh, th- there's more potential, as you mentioned, in the electric components of the car. But to improve the longevity of the vehicle, they're reined in, I don't know what percentage, 20 25%, so that the car will last longer. Because if it's always running at like what it's peak rated for all the time, you're going to wear out components over time. So essentially, the power shot provided you know the battery is in a state that it will let you do it, um, you can essentially access more of that that potential that's left on the table for short bursts, right? So my understanding is it's similar to that. You're tapping into the popularity of uh, the 2002 Fast and Furious era where everybody nitrous has button. like a nitrous button they could use 20 times. Ninth gear. Yeah, yeah. so uh, evidently you are limited in the number of uses you get of that electric nitrous button, effectively. Is that, is that accurate? You Does have Dodge have any electric vehicles, vehicles right now? Does Dodge, Dodge, have, release? Dodge has the Hornet, which is, they laughably, they laughably call the Hornet an RT with a 1.5 liter engine. Is that an and EV, that though? does have power shot. No, 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 but do they have any it's dedicated a EVs yet? No, no. It's a hybrid. no. The, the charger the charger will be their first fully electric vehicle yep so I you know I just made the connection right now it is very funny 
that the car's name is the Charger. I'm you sure just is, put that really together. just now. Yeah, I, I was just, late to the party, uh, and I was, and I came to that conclusion like two months ago. I've been thinking about this for years before <laughs> they ever even said this is the name of their car is going to be a Charger. I'm like, it's <laughs> right there. But then they again, can't not call it's it a also Charger. the worst name for it. Because if someone wants to Google an EV charger, they're going to get plugs and cables. The other way around, if they look for a plug and they type in EV charger, they might find pictures of the, the charger. And buy one. Cause it's... Yeah, because it's the same price, yeah. a cable. And yes. Yeah. Probably $80,000 or $90,000 yeah. electric is, muscle car. Is the charger on NACS? Is it going to be on NACS? No, it's going to be CCS. Oh. Right, and people gave me crap in the comments about that. They did. They gave me crap. Like, this guy lives in a world with no adapters. Okay, well, let me tell you that those adapters are not all made the same. They're hundreds of dollars if you want one that will actually charge at the full rate. And even then, your adapter can fail. They're, they're much more prone to... I could to see it as, like, a dealer fail. add-on. Yeah, where you get, like, a really high-quality adapter like fine great and you and maybe the warranty extends to the adapter too but everybody and their grandma is selling adapters on amazon to go like to let your electric car charge on tesla or vice versa right and it's a you don't know how what they're rated for right <clears throat> and myself included i bought a hundred dollar adapter and we couldn't get it to work and then we look it up and turns out for a couple of years they didn't put in the components that allow you to do that so you'd have to go to a Tesla dealership. They'll have to change out the computer of the car. Um, and then it's it's not that expensive. It's like four or $500. But Just the market's kind of unregulated right now. I guess right. It's, it's all over the place. And people saying that adapters are the solution. It's like the, the right now we're probably operating at the peak of CCS. Exactly. We're operating now at the peak of the usability of CCS. And if the adapters are hot garbage now... They're not going to be getting better as CCS loses popularity. If you make adapters and you see, or let's say you make adapters of any kind, not just not just for electric vehicles, and you see, oh, all of North America is switching to this standard, are you going to continue to invest in making better adapters, or are you just going to make different products? To, to your point, you're we're we're at the peak of CCS, and adapters are just going to get more obscure. Fewer and fewer companies are going to make them. Like it's, and they're going to get worse. Well, the, they're already crap. The, yeah, and they're going to get worse. The European Union is just going to pass a law that all EVs have to charge on USB C. So yeah. <laughs> that will fix all the problems. Or, that won't be. That won't ever need to but change. The EU uses CCS. Yeah. The, and I mean, all the charge, all the Tesla networks as it's, in in right? Europe is CCS. Now, everything over there is CCS. But America's just got to be different. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not different. It's better. NACS is a better standard. I think it is a better standard. Uh, did you happen to go watch the Technology Connections video on it? No, but... No, it's worth watching if you're at all interested. All right, moving on. We're introducing a new segment this week called Fictional Dream Car, <clears throat> which is exactly what it sounds. Effectively talking about what car from media, pop culture, science fiction would you want to have? This is actually really hard for me. Well, because there are cool cars out there, but is it a car you'd actually want to own? Right. Not like enough the, Miatas. The, yeah, yes. There's not enough. There's not the enough answer is yes. Miata. The answer is yes. I don't know how you guys had trouble with this. This was easy. Okay. All right. Well, is yours first, Logan? Let's talk about Mine's it. Mine's first. All right. So, <laughs> so, so let's see. What is this picture? <laughs> what is that on the right? Well, it's a super Napoleon red. Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite's a fictional story, and there's one shot where there's a brat. <laughs> How much research you need to do before you found a movie, a single movie? How long of a list did you go down? I already knew this. I, I, I know every movie. That I'm All three of them. <laughs> Are there three? There's, he he no. knows that, like, in, in a movie from 1981, in the background no. of a parking lot, there's a super brat. <laughs> Actually, you guys might like this. So I went to a website called IMCDB, and it is like IMDB, but cars. instead of actors, it's for cars. It oh shows you every movie that a specific car has appeared. Guess what I'm going to be doing. I was just going to say, this exactly. is going to have a new favorite. segment on the show. IMCDB. Yeah, but this one is, it's all like, 
I was searching for a while, like trying to find anything anyone's ever heard of. And I was like, oh my God, Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. All right, finally. Because everything else was just like crappy B movies where it was like in the background. <laughs> I mean, okay. Like, this is a big But okay, if I can't do that one. I can't one. believe that there's a super rat Napoleon Dynamite. That's so, so perfect. That's very fitting. So perfect. It's, it is um, the, it's the movie version of that car. Yeah. Um, so super if I can't do that one. That one shot Napoleon Dynamite. Ooh, I can't do that one. Yeah, Bumblebee, okay. obviously. Okay. Obviously. Okay. Bumblebee is you want, you, you want to be able to transform and... Yeah, would it transform or yeah. you just want the Bumblebee? Yeah, of course. Dude. Okay. And he would destroy my enemies. Yeah, then no, um, he would fold you into a bush as he transformed. I never yeah, understood that, didn't you? Yeah. And I would get the uh I would get the uh if given the option, I would choose the seven or the sixty seven from Transformers four. Oh, it looks really good. That's yeah, I would take that one too. That's <clears> cool. Okay. With the extended wheel arches, I don't know why. Even though you can see like the the lines in them, the plastic for the extended wheel arches there, that looks pretty bad. But I would right. take that one. So it's cool. When Bumblebee's off fighting crime in the galaxy, then I'll have the brat from the point that I'm like, and then you know. He, he gets back and you're just like making out with the brat. And he's like, I thought we, were, I thought we had something special. <laughs> Bubble me, don't go. Yeah. Um, yep, that's, that's, my that's a good choice. Good choice. And then Bumblebee will just be saying, you'll just be singing before he cheats on the radio. <laughs> What's your card room? The men in black uh, Ford. Not the, not the Mercedes. No, I take the Grand Victoria the fir- from the first one. It's... With all the gadgets and oh, the yeah. red button and everything. <laughs> yeah. You didn't see anything. Yeah, because you just you just roll by, people assume you're either like a pimp or like a ninety year old guy or a ninety year old pimp. And 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 it's got all the gadgets. The cool part about it is that when you watch the movie you get the sense that you haven't even like scratched the surface of all the things that the car does. Yeah. There's so many yeah, like, like things inspector that are gadget. Touch. They don't address yeah. it all. Yeah, that's cool. All right, what's yours? Yours, you took mine. I, when I saw this on there, uh, I, I went on to to put this slideshow together, and I saw you'd already put this in there. I'm like, son of a gun! You took I mine. mean, there's only one right answer. <laughs> I know it's so cool. It is the Batman 2022 Batmobile, which hey, I love Christopher Nolan films. Uh, yeah, even the legacy. I thought Batman about doing the Tumblr. The Tumblr is cool. Like they're all they're all cool in their own right. This is just so guttural, so grounded. Like when you think about like a real Batman, like obviously this is what he would drive. When obviously, what I loved about this is that in Batman twenty twenty two, when Batman is introduced, he is introduced to all the world. In any other movie, he would be the villain. Everyone is terrified looking in the shadows and eventually he slowly approaches out of the shadows, intentionally making his boots make a loud noise because we see him a hundred times appear and disappear quietly. And he's intentionally thudding his boots and walking toward you menacingly. And then they introduce the car in exactly the same way. And it's just like, Whoa! it's just so, oh. It's really interesting you say that. So they almost depict, he's a hero, but they almost depict him as a villain. Mm-hmm. And they introduce him as a villain or whatever. You know what's really funny about this Batmobile is mostly based off a second generation Charger. And if you look at classic movies, all the bad guys mm-hmm. drove yeah. Chargers. Yeah. The good guys drove Mustangs, the bad guys drove Mopars. And so it's it's interesting that you you say that he was almost uh, portrayed as like a or a, shown as a the way you would demonstrate a villain. Right, because people understand what that's like to watch a movie and see a villain come on screen. Yeah. And they're tapping into that to increase how much you have you respect this entity. Almost an anti-hero, like a villain doing the right things. And it's the same thing with the car. Like, this looks like a bad guy's car. This yeah. does not look like the hero's car. Right. It's so cool. It's, it's unbelievably I, cool. Really cool. I'm just imagining now this Batmobile in orange with like a Confederate flag. <laughs> that is the real bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a bit of a lore background story to this, which I thought was cool. Really? So Bruce actually picked this Charger out from an auto yard to race in the, before ever becoming Batman. 
and used the car for street racing before later modifying it for his vigilante work. So in the movie, this is like early Batman. So he's still kind of learning the ropes. This is just his car. He's only two years in, I believe. Yeah, that he modified, changed out the panels, took out the trunk, installed a jet engine, and removed the interior out of the roll cage and who knows what else. I love that it was just... You, you get an idea of its presence, but it's like kind of shadowed for a lot of the movie. So in production of the real vehicle for the movie, um, they use a custom second generation Dodge Charger. There were three V8s vehicles. They made several vehicles. Three of them had a V8 in the neighborhood of 600, 650 horsepower. And some were actually built off of Teslas. So they, oh, so they could film quietly. Mm -hmm. So when they needed to do night shots or shots of the interior without the V8 right behind your head um, ruining the audio, uh, they used electric cars for that. And then one more was built uh, on a rally cross chassis for that jump that it did on the highway scene. That was a <laughs> real jump that the car performed. And they added CG rain and you know fire and stuff, but the car itself did did that jump. That's really cool. I love I love um, Penguin's performance. Yeah, like, what's his name? He's so good. He disappears into the role. Yeah. But <clears throat> this shot's cool, and the rear end of this thing is so freaking cool. And it looks like a bat. <laughs> it it's so cool. I don't think I think the front end's even better. But the picture there is different. The headlights are different in that. There, one. there's like concept art. There's renders, and there's the real vehicle. So they're they're a little bit different, but they all kind of capture the general idea of what, what it looks like. Yeah. Well, I, I remember my line of thinking when this movie was coming out, because I think everybody gave Rob Rob Pattinson, a, 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 you know, like the benefit of the doubt that he was going to be a good Batman, because obviously he was in like The Lighthouse, Lighthouse and tons of yeah. other like yeah, really, really good, good movies. movies. It wasn't quite like a Heath Ledger with the Joker, where people are like, the Brokeback Mountain guy, like, was it a <laughs> Joker? Like, you know, so like, um, but I remember like, like, okay, I'm pretty excited about this, but then a little while later, they released the photo of the car, and I was like, this movie's gonna be awesome. Like, this is the car, no bad decisions were made in this movie. Now, like, it was awesome. It's so We good. don't need to go on a tangent, we can discuss this offline. I didn't really like the movie very much. Oh my gosh. Dad, did. Dad and I watched it, and I couldn't shut up. I was so excited. I okay, was, I was talking about all the symbolism and how how cool every, like, all the double entendres and the meanings. And the, oh there were a lot of parts of it that I liked. It was very detective Batman, which is like really old school Batman. But anyway, <laughs> the car though, I would take that car. Yeah. Same. All right, hot takes. So these are opinions that we have that we feel strongly about. It may or may not be controversial. So we will start with Logan. Let's hear about your hot take. <laughs> I, I don't know if you don't read the note slide if you if you can see it. What do you th what do you think this hot take is? Or this is talking opinion? about dealer markups, I'm guessing, and the dealer network <laughs> system. Yeah, definitely. So people should stop complaining about dealer markups. That's wow. my hot take. Boo. Uh, uh, goodness, I'm gonna deem this good take. Just don't buy the car. Yeah, don't buy it. Exactly. Um, it's just I mean, you guys market. buy your cars off Facebook Marketplace, so... <laughs> yeah, it so doesn't affect me, but um, I can't tell you. So, like, on... Uh, so, I'm in, like, some RAV4 forums, because uh, I love the first-gen <laughs> RAV4. Sure. And, um, and on the Facebook page, you know, people are, like, really dedicated to fans. They're, like, taking MR2 engines and, like, putting them in first-gen R4 or RAV4s and, like, um, doing cool stuff, but then when you go to the subreddit, like the Rav4 subreddit, every post is just like, "Is this a good deal on my 2022 Rav4 Prime?" And they're like, four thousand dollar dealer markup. That's criminal." And it's like, "Shut up! Don't buy it! Don't, don't buy, buy it. it!" Yeah, I don't get it. I I literally like most things. I can kind of see the other side, but like this one, I don't understand at all. Like. If you don't purchase the vehicle, then they lose. Then you won't be affected by the dealer markup. You can try to find a less expensive vehicle. And this isn't a statement of need either. It's not like, oh, I need the 2023 RAV4 Prime. I can't have anything else. Like it's like you could have tons of other stuff. You don't you want this like luxury 
Um, yeah, it's not like dealer markups yeah. on food. The same thing happened with graphics cards a couple of years ago. And like, I get it. It sucks when you can't buy a decent graphics card for less than $1,000 because, you know, resellers and crypto, crypto and whatever else. So I just didn't buy one. For I was like, things will normalize eventually. There's a lot of people that want to buy graphics cards. And yep. they did eventually. Just had to wait. And the, Yeah. And the flipping market is a little bit different with vehicles because, you know, I, I don't know if you guys saw the thing about the Cybertruck about not being allowed to flip it for a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my hot take. I think people should stop crying about it. And, and yeah, like what you said, you said you couldn't buy a decent graf- graphics card for under $1,000, but it's a little different with vehicles because, like, you can get tons of decent cars. There's tons that you could get. Um, well, and cars don't, don't go obsolete after two or three years yeah. like a graphics card does. You know? Well, say that to the Chrysler infotainment system. But other than that... Well, it was obsolete yeah. when it came out. You, you know what's funny is that 8.0 touchscreen they had from 2015 to for a while it was actually awarded as being one of the best infotainment systems and then they just kept it in everything and didn't change it yeah, like if it ain't broke don't fix it and i mean your guys car is 2020 it's so man? bad can i go on a quick tangent real quick <laughs> real quick sorry you said it i have to say when you have to youtube how to perform a basic function, you have a crap infotainment system. Hey, do you want to take a wild guess? Take a wild guess how you pair a phone. I, it has taken me 30 plus minutes to do it in mom's old grand caravan. Oh, so you know. I do. How, how do you pair a phone? I blacked out. I've, <laughs> I've blocked out all of the, that information and, and I'll work through it in therapy. No, you so, have to you have to start the voice control, right? And you have to do it entirely through voice. Oh, you, that's right. That grand only, caravan, that's how you did it. Only do it through voice. It's not in the menu in the touchscreen, which it has. How does that and make it any very sense? Very easily yeah. could have been. Why Maybe flashbacks to Nom? And it's not even like a <laughs> modern day smart <laughs> assistant or something. No, it is just so a Chrysler engineer's interpretation of what a human voice sounds like. <laughs> Which is not even close. Do you know how old that system is? That's because yours is a 2020, right? Your 2018. 2018. Okay, but they still put the same one in all the way up until 2023. This infotainment system was originally used in a Ferrari. Oh, yeah. so, you know, in 2009. Yeah. Gosh. Well, so and, it's like funny. I just like I can imagine the Dodge guys. They're just like, well, we have to do Bluetooth. Well, once this whole internet fads over, we won't have to worry about this. <laughs> Bluetooth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, put a put put a Hellcat engine I, in the I, caravan, making it possible. Okay. To pay I know we're to. I know we're coming off the heels of me saying the Grand Caravan is the greatest car ever made. <laughs> yeah. In the last episode, except this one thing. Uh, but if I could change one thing about it, oh yeah. You, and what's beautiful about that is, you can, you can go buy an aftermarket one for like two hundred dollars and install it yourself. I, or just like probably. duct taping an iPad. To the I, I'm shocked you didn't do it before you brought the car home. It, if it was my car that I had to drive every day, I probably would have. But it's mostly cured. It just makes me suffer with it. For How do you play music in the Cuda? Uh, <laughs> well, you're Very assuming I can hear it over the wind and road noise. <laughs> um, I use a, a cassette tape that's Bluetooth. It has its own internal battery. Just like uh, a wireless cool. cassette. I, I, it's the weirdest I, thing. I used, uh, I used uh, like Bluetooth speakers in my cars for a long time. And in fact, I remember Jordan lent me his Bluetooth speaker, and it I was like black. You left it yeah, on the and dashboard. I put it, I put it on the dashboard of the car <laughs> in this in the summer in Arizona, and it like melted the speaker. It, like it turned like, into like a banana. It. I was so annoyed. Now, yeah. like, but whatever. Like, I haven't used it in eight weeks or whatever since I gave it to him. Yeah. yeah, it like melted it. It was insane. All right. Here's my hot take. <laughs> How close these Arizona are. is the best place for car enthusiasts. For the longest time, the prevailing ethos, the prevailing idea was, oh, yeah, the center of car culture is California. You can make a compelling case that Arizona isn't the best. You are not going to convince me that California is not the worst place, the worst place, okay? 
Florida's great. Texas is great for a number of reasons. Florida, or sorry, California is horrible. Arizona, I'm, I'm partial, but Arizona's a great place for to be a car enthusiast. I was going to ask, which is the take? Is it that California is the worst or that Arizona is <laughs> the best? Because I agree with one of those, disagree with the other one. I mean, the, the, the take is Arizona is the best, but it, it's probably tied. You can say both. But let me, let me explain why. California, you have to worry about emissions, which are increasingly stringent. You have to do inspections. You have to have a license plate on the front. The traffic is horrible. Some of the worst traffic in the country. You have- The accident rate there is so high. Accidents are bad. Thefts are horrible. Auto theft is horrible. Cars getting broken into. Traffic laws are strictly enforced because the state is broke despite having the economy of most small countries. Actually, most large countries. It's like the sixth largest or fifth largest economy in the world. I meant most small countries combined, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, roads are terrible. Despite how much money they bring in, they still manage to have horrible roads. They have weeds growing through their highways. That's crazy. Now, I will say, the scenery is fantastic. Weather is fantastic. But everything about owning and operating a vehicle in that state is terrible. Arizona, on the other hand... You do have to do emissions, but beyond a certain year, they stop caring. Ask me how I know. Um, you don't have to do inspections. And maybe you have to do inspections. I've never had to do an inspection. I don't think you have to in Arizona. No inspections. In some conditions. Um, you don't have a license plate on the front, on the front of the car. Um, in some counties, yeah, you have to do inspections. Uh, you, there's car meets. Weather's still pretty good here. It's hot in the summer, but there's lots of car meets, lots of car shows. The registration's relatively cheap, comparatively speaking. Oh, and, and, probably the biggest one of all, cars do not rust here. Now, I know they don't rust in Southern California, but we don't get rust, right? Now, our weather here doesn't destroy interiors, but that's infinitely easier to fix than a rusted out car. That's my soapbox. I'm stepping off. What do you have to say, Logan? I was going to say, I live in the mid-Atlantic, and I was going to say, like, there's no way California's worse. All those things that California deals with, I deal with in Maryland, um, and cars rust here anything north of like north carolina just don't even like don't even be like a car what guy because like anything cool what is the most recent car as far as its age that you've seen with obvious rust? oh i was in uh, syracuse new york and i saw like no joke like a 2018 ram and like the, all the rockers were completely rusted out like anything south of like the door handle you can watch that happen in real time <laughs> yeah, and then the other thing, I have a couple notes about what makes Arizona the best. One, when do your guys' driver's licenses expire? Oh, yeah. 2056? 50, 50 years. Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. People think my ID is fake. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't expire till 2056? Mine's 2059, but yeah. Yeah. That's about the way you get it. Yeah, 2062. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also, you don't pay tax on private sales. So if yep. you purchase a vehicle, private sale, you don't pay tax. Every other state I've been to, you pay tax. So people just lie. I also discovered that when I went to the DMV like a good citizen and had down to the penny the exact amount I needed to pay in tax, and she was just like, oh, you don't, you don't need to do that. <laughs> and I was like, I'll just pretend I didn't uh, come here with all this money. <laughs> and then I was all spent by the end of the day. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, another good thing about Arizona you can register basically anything you want and drive it on the road. They yeah. do not care. Be I've seen a YouTube video, I kid you not, a Tumblr with an Arizona license plate. A Tumblr like a Batman. A Tumblr, Tumblr from Batman. Love it. I was going to say A actual right. Tumblr on the road with a jet engine, <laughs> and the cops came up just to get a picture with it, and were on their way. <laughs> no one, you can put anything on the road. There's a reason Whereas that... in California, they're like, mm, your car's awfully loud, and we have, like, Batmobiles <laughs> on the road. <laughs> I love it here. Uh, there's a reason that U-Haul's based here. U-Haul is able to, like, base their, their cars here and their registration for, like, their fleet vehicles. Basically, by yeah. registering and, and operating U-Haul out of Arizona, they save, like, 90% on those fees and costs than they would in, basically, any other state. Yeah. What are you going to say? Like... Oh, this... No pun intended, this might be a little bit of a hot take too, but like in my experience, um, I've lived in a lot of states, a lot of places, like Arizona cops are like the coolest cops ever. Like 
I've never gotten them taken in Arizona, and they're super cool. But I have a theory about that, which is that when they get out of their air conditioned cruiser, <laughs> your window, they don't want to be out there. They just want to have to. <laughs> want to get back there? All right. Warning: Just go away. They have the grumpy inside. motors that already are suffering, so they'll write you tickets. But the yeah. car cops don't care. Yeah, Arizona is great for for being a car enthusiast. All right, but don't go outside between the months of March and October. April. This is, this is a prediction hot take, Logan. I think Chrysler will be dissolved by 2030. What? What? And the reason I think that is right now, what they've got is a minivan. Now, it is a, a good, popular minivan. But it doesn't have a Hellcat in it. It's true. It does not yet have a Hellcat in it. They have not they made it Hellcat. desperate. Yeah, they, they might. And then they have the Chrysler Airflow, which is, from what I understand, fairly close to production. Really? They, I've heard nothing about it other than what they presented like a year ago. It was like two years ago. But what at the time, that? it was supposed airflow? to be, it was based on a still large platform. It's essentially going to be a Dodge Charger with a small SUV body. Yeah, it's like a largish crossover right <clears throat> now they they're not going to do the crazy interior stuff but it's supposed to be fairly close they it's, had that other one they just showed off the halcyon halcyon but the halcyon that one not only is it not close to production it's an electric vehicle with no battery pack what they didn't even put like they have to push it onto the stage or maybe use some like 12 volt battery to get it to roll up there because they they designed it it was purely as a concept they designed it so low, you actually would, you're sitting where the battery pack would be. Yeah. Like Stance the whole thing is just EV. nonsense. Stance TV. Stance TV. They did the same thing with the Dodge Viper when it was announced, and that thing was awesome. Yeah, but when Christ, when you're talking about a company that only has one car, you need something that's a little closer to production than needing to be wheeled out on stage. Yeah. You know what else I noticed is Chrysler 200s have completely disappeared. When was the last time? I know you owned one, but like, when was the last time you saw one? They're, they're gone. They don't last. Yeah, ask me how I know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were so cool, and they were fast. I liked ours. And the interior was so nice. For the money, it was a great car. We were really spoiled because we went to trade it in, and we're all like, hmm, dang, okay. You don't want your stupid car. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are going from a luxury car, ostensibly a luxury car, to, you know, an average car. Imported uh, from Detroit. Imported from Detroit, actually Mexico. <laughs> I remember that Eminem commercial from the Super Bowl. I, I watched that recently. It's a it's a great commercial all the way up until the end. He steps out of the Chrysler 200. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> it's a fantastic commercial. I just wish it wasn't a 200. They, but they couldn't exactly have him step out of the 300 because the Chrysler 300 is not built in Detroit. It's built in Canada. So, oh, uh, does he get out of the 200 in that commercial? He does. Yeah. I think that's the only one at the time that that 200 was built in what not in Detroit but whatever suburb is around. I don't know. But but so, anyway, I think Chrysler Chrysler as a brand will be dissolved by 2030 because that's about the time when the Pacifico will be long enough in the tooth that they're not going to refresh. That they need to refresh it and they're not going to have the money. They're just going to make it a Dodge. <clears throat> they're just going to make, make it a Dodge Pacifica and re- rebrand it. I think they'll just call it the Caravan again. Oh, really? Does the dog not have a minivan anymore? No, the Grand Caravan. Don't they still have it? No. No. No, they haven't made it since The only thing two. Dodge sells as of this year is the Hornet, which is a small SUV. Oh, so sad. So Dodge yeah, is not Durango. No. They sell Durango this year? No. No, then, start, then, then as of next year, 2025, the only thing they'll be selling is the Hornet. So sad. And, and then mm. Chrysler it only has a minivan. So, so Chrysler and Dodge are down to a minivan and a small SUV. And Durango. That's that's on its way. It has a foot up. And has not had any kind of major visual refresh since 2014. All right. How cool is this uh, image, though? It is really cool. And it was just like, I, I the prompt was um, a gravestone that says Chrysler 1925 to 2030. And that's... The, the car is really cool. The, I, I was like, this is pretty metal. This, <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> All right, Marketplace Mayhem. Oh, gosh, here we Tell go. Tell us all about this. This is so... Marketplace Mayhem. This is a segment we tried to do for a while. So this is, can you call it the best? 
of Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> I think you can. <laughs> I, I think you could call it the most interesting. So, yeah. So the, the most. Oh, honey. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, like it's also so been uncanny valley. It's also been <laughs> called. Uh, what is it? Great awful taste, but great execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Awful, awful taste, taste, but great execution. Thank you. <laughs> awful taste, but great execution. And this first one is just that embodied into a vehicle with four doors. Two, two doors. Yeah. Two doors. Thank you. With four wheels in it. So this is, despite its looks, a 1995 Ford Thunderbird two door with 50,000 <laughs> miles, a custom 49 front end and rear end. And they're asking. I don't know how much they're asking, Logan. Did you see? It can't be any more than twenty dollars. Twenty five Twi- grand. Oh, wow. Twenty five thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> oh for a ninety five Thunderbird, and it's almost like I can't be mad at it because it's so well done. From the outside, it looks really, really well done. They definitely chose the worst. If they did it in black. You wouldn't be able to see so so obviously what it is underneath. But it's very obviously a '90s car <clears throat> in the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, even the door handles are like that black plastic. They didn't even chrome the door handles. It just is such a bizarre. Like, buddy, props to you. Great job. Like, it looks great. Workmanship's fantastic. But this is something just for you. Yeah, like no one, not... no one is going to. That's not a marketplace. That is a you and your mirror are the only people interested in this car. You would probably make more money on this if you had just done a decent paint job to whatever this was before, a '95 Ford Thunderbird, and you just left it like that. You'd there probably... is zero chance this is sold to anybody for that number of dollars. I still can't get over the plastic handle that they didn't fix. <laughs> what did the back look like? Did the back was the back re- redone too? I will say the front is the more flattering angle. The, the back was redone. In, I don't have a picture of it here. Um, but yeah, where that crease goes out the back, that's where the taillight is. So they rerouted the taillights, rerouted the headlight. They like they did a lot of work in it. They will. Like, you know what I said about this one? Oh, it's like none of this works. Like none of the headlights work. Like, <laughs> yeah. When we tried this last time, when we, this came up, this is like the movie The Labyrinth. Because I saw the back, the the backstory, and how much artistry, the and puppeteering, the puppeteering. It was so elaborate. The choreography, this, the green screening, all of the effort. And I was like, "Wow, I've never seen so much effort go into something that is such shit." <laughs> <laughs> and and all that's those same what, emotions bubbling up. Exactly, and that's what I think of when I look at this. I'm like, "There's so much effort. You absolutely hit a target not worth aiming at." Uh, our next one. Uh, <laughs> marginally better. You're so derpy. This I is... love these so much. It makes me laugh just looking at how derpy they are. A PT Cruiser. No, sorry. A London Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> a, a 2001 Chrysler London Taxi International. Four door hatchback, 95,000 miles. Apparently, a company in California produces... So, so this wasn't just someone's project where they're like, you know what I want to do today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to turn a PT Cruiser into a London taxi. This is actually a company, I guess, that did these conversions. There were 20 of them made. This one is still around. I don't know how it got from California. I think this is in Tucson is where it's at. Um, this one's more reasonably priced. <laughs> I, yeah, 3900 bucks. Yeah, 4000 bucks. I mean... You're starting in a PT Cruiser. <laughs> I wish I could find the pictures of the Joker themed PT Cruiser someone tried to trade me. Oh gosh! Did I tell you about that? Uh, you show me pictures of it. It's so bad. But anyway, I, I, my guess is that they made these for backgrounds. And Maybe we decided it was for a movie prop. I think that's what we decided. Southern California is probably in a movie. And then my question is, how the heck did they manage to put ninety five thousand miles on it? They oh, probably put like ninety thousand miles on it before the conversion. Is what it is. Yeah. I mean, as far as like making a car look like something else, this one's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Maybe I've seen this picture too much; it doesn't offend me anymore. But <laughs> I, the headlights that look cross-eyed bother me so much. <laughs> it looks like a dude's been punched in the nose. I would drive it as an Uber and pretend to be British, dude. You know, oh, oh my god, a little hat. And like, <laughs> that that would be... has you can do Uber black. <laughs> a luxury service where you like, yeah, you're like in a full suit. 
Yeah. <laughs> you, you talk like an like a Cockney. Call London. him governor the whole time. <laughs> it's just, like, bro, I'm gonna pick you up for a four thousand dollar investment. That actually, might not be a bad idea. Man, you I'd pay four thousand dollars just for the laughs. I would I put a dash cam in and record the reaction of people getting into my car. Do you like a turn it into a game show, like whatever cash cab? Cash cab, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We gotta move on to this gym. Oh, oh my boy, gosh. here we go. <laughs> it hurts. So, um, I had an interaction with this guy. I talked to him over Messenger. Um, he wanted to trade me uh, this uh, abomination for my 1973 Plymouth satellite, and I was so confused. So, on first impressions, you're gonna notice the badge on the left side is wrong. The random stickers the the reflector stickers all over the place you might even notice if you look close all of the dryer vents and tubing coming out of the hood the beautiful dragon door handles the house numbers yeah that spell out 392, 392 even though i already know just by the front end of this car a 392 was never even offered in this vehicle it's nope generous no, he, he put 392 on there, and I said, did you do... Uh, well, I'll get into our conversation in we'll, a second. But look we'll at this. role play that, that conversation. You can read his side, okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you look close, I mean, I've stared at this picture a lot because I've shared it to a lot of people and laughed at this dude endlessly. But if you look at the uh, butterfly door handles... Dragonfly, hooks, thank dragonfly you. Dragonfly coat hook door handles. It's not a sentence anyone's ever said before. <laughs> Brand new sentence. <laughs> When you lift up the door handle, he clearly scratches the paint with the dragonfly's wings. If you get real close on... Uh, paint is a generous yeah. word. The, the coating. Do you grab the dragonfly by the tail to open the I door I think handle? so. Yes. It's like a coat around. hook. <laughs> I, I get the feeling he just went around his house just and just with like the dryer vents, house numbers. He took, he took like a bunch of PCP and went to like go in. <laughs> And I was like, all right. <laughs> all right, so here, here's a... I, I, he's like, hey, man, uh, you willing to trade? And I said, what for? And he sent me the pictures, and I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I tried to play it off like I wasn't lo- talking to an absolute idiot. So I said, what else can you tell me about it? 165,000 miles, clean title, 5.7, dual heated seats. <laughs> the blowers I did customly... Myself, but they're not active yet. I haven't cut the holes. Great fun, fast car. Service <laughs> and tuned. Just got new brakes and rotors. I said, I'm confused. What are the wires on the hood? I'm trying to play dumb like like this guy doesn't. If I wanted, I could use them and run the lines to the engine. It's simple mechanical engineering. I build fast and furious cars and sell them for trade. Boss. <laughs> I said, why does it say 392? Uh, the 5.7 is a 345 displacement. Uh, the 6.4 Hemi is 392. Did you swap the engine to a 6.4? I put it on there. I'm pushing more than any ordinary 5.7. I told you, I had a super tune. <laughs> and the engine was wiped and sprayed new as day. <laughs> I have a lot of people interested, but your Plymouth caught my eye, so let me know. If not, appreciate it. Why the dragon flies? <laughs> Thank you, bro. Have a nice day. It's a custom car, in case you haven't noticed. Tuned. <laughs> Tuned. But why? I'm trying to understand. And he didn't respond, which is why there's a gap there. So I followed up, tried to stroke his ego. I said, I've never seen a car like this before, so I'm curious. I know, boss. You'll never see a car like this. I told you I built Fast and Furious movie cars. I haven't seen the movies. Which one is this from? <laughs> bro, I'm saying I based my cars off the movie. When people see it, they say it looks like a car from Back to the Future, Fast and Furious, but I actually met Dom Toretto. Uh, so they're like movie prop replicas. That work, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the see. mental health establishment in this country is really failing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, Oh my gosh. Oh, just we can go on and on about his spelling and what what the heck is spray new as day. I don't know what any of this means. He doesn't know what any of it means, but you know what? It's simple mechanical. We should look him up and see what other things he, he had. Lack at. of capitalization. <laughs> yeah, 
the, the aggressive lack of of any kind of capitalization or grammar. Or oh, anything. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Yes, I'm. You're right. I, I you're right. I'm I'm, I'm throwing stones. People in glass, glass houses. houses. He was just really excited about the uh, great opportunity this was. Logan. I couldn't. I couldn't handle it. All right, I do have one more for you guys. I found this one recently. So this is an actual ad on Auto Trader. The guy turned his car into a meme. It says, ugly and smelly and the shite don't run. $5,000. He's listed at $799. And if you read this, this is an actual dealership, by the way. This is not personal sale. This is a dealership. Cap the picture? Yeah. This is a dealership, and he has a bunch of pictures of it. So, it's a 1997 Dodge Dakota SLT extended cab. He wants $799. He said, ugly as evil and smelly as the devil's crack. <laughs> But it's a V8 Dakota with an ignition system issue keeping it from running. In all caps. The tires are decent and the mechanical's okay. And it it's just an old work truck. It is an extended cab with a rear bench, fluids. He talks about it. He goes, God knows trucks ain't cheap. And this is. So maybe it's worth the gamble. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy a car from this guy because he seems like a straight shooter pretty honest yeah and he goes uh come visit us and experience the totally apathetic mediocre customer service <laughs> oh, backed by a sarcastic attitude combined with a complete misunderstanding of pronouns <laughs> at least he's honest <laughs> we sell cheap cars we sell cars cheap yep okay that one that one i loved so much i could not include it. <clears throat> we have speed rounds all right speed rounds jeremy quizzing me today so i will just look at this screen Okay, first one up is the cousin car. You're going to see the car, and you're going to try to guess what car it's based on. Ready, set, go. This is, is Mitsubishi a, Raider. I can't even tell you what it is. Mitsubishi Raider, and that was when they had a partnership with Dodge, because that is also a Dodge form of Dakota. Correct? I nailed it. You got it. Buick Rendezvous, that is also an ugly Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota Supra, that's also a uh, Z4. BMW Z4. Yep. Oh, Fiat uh, Spider? 124 Spider. 124 Spider, and that is also a Mazda Miata. Hmm. Fiat. Fiat. Fiat, yeah. All right, last one. Toyota Yaris? That is a Toyota Yaris, the last generation Toyota Yaris. And a Mitsubishi Mirage? It's a Mazda 2. It's a Mazda 2. Oh, okay. Mazda should, 2 with a different grill. The Mazda 2 is known as the Demio in Japan. Oh, cool. That's cool. All right, so next speed round, guess the price. Corvette C8. I know they're targeting 60K when the thing first came out in 2020. Base C8, 72? Starts at? 70, okay. That's pretty close. Wait, can we do prices right rules on this? Okay, BMW Z4. <clears throat> I want to say base price, 52? Logan, Logan, what's your guess? 59. 55. Mason Eight. wins. Dang it. Audi R S5. S5. You guess first this time, Logan. <laughs> what the? That's kind of like middle of the lineup. Yeah, I say starting at uh, at sixty three. I was gonna say sixty. You're both fifty eight. Okay. Nissan Z Nismo. Oh, a Nismo starts starts at like forty for the base one, right? So I'd say fifty four. So I think it's like sixty. Sixty five. Okay. Sixty five thousand dollars, and what you're driving around says Nissan on it. Uh, that's a Jaguar F Type. Sixty eight. Dude, they sell for like 19 on the used market. Yeah, I would say 73. 78, okay. The one that I cannot believe is the Nismo is so much money. That was a lot more of a markup than 25K, because yeah. it starts at 40, doesn't it? 65? What do they do with it? And you don't, you don't really don't get know. anything for it. You really don't get much. Does it come with like a Versa or something? <laughs> yeah, it's, it means it not to. A Versa plus 10 grand, yeah. Jeez. Is there any car we've looked at today that you would take over that Hyundai um, Project 74 thing that they showed off? There's not a single car that we've shown today that I would take over that. You would take that? Yeah, that I would take that. That thing is so, it's cool. so cool. It's very cool. It's like very DeLorean. <laughs> it's really cool. And the only reason I'm saying that is because we have not shown the Miata. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're right. There was a brat. Right? There was a there brat. Was, yeah, hey. <laughs> the trick was like, I'll have seven tricky brats. <laughs> Blind ranking. One to five. Four door sports sedan. Okay. What is that? Aston Martin Rapide, right? Rapide, yep. This is the question is which would you most like to own? 
That's actually a 2014 Ford Fusion. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a solid three. C63 AMG. This is the V8 by Turbo. Uh, two. That is the previous four. generation M3. Yeah, four. The repeat was three. C63 was two. Two. This is four. Yeah. CT5V Blackwing. One. One. I don't even have to think <laughs> yeah, about it. I don't even know what else is on the list. Six-speed manual. Wait, okay. If this is an automatic and the other car is a manual, I'd be pissed. <laughs> it doesn't matter that one at five. <laughs> Blackwing with a manual? One. One. So you're comfortable putting... Oh, five. Oh, Panamera easy. At five? Easy. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're really happy with your... I'm very happy with that. Okay. Yeah. Is that like the first That's... one you think we've completely nailed? I think I don't... I wouldn't have changed anything about that list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to say that um, Panamera owners save gas... Because their children weigh less than other children, because they throw up every time they see it, so all their kids are believing it. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long way to get there. I, if, if you have a strictly believing, I never know children, how you're going to make the connection. And he always says this. Always, yeah, uh, everything. Yeah. All right, now we got an engine sound one. Jeez. <laughs> It sounds, uh, it sounds like re- a really high revving, like Trick. V10 or something. Okay, um, uh, what, is it a cross plane, flat plane? I'm not sure. Um, it sounds like a. Or do, is that a Lexus LFA? No, no it's not. That's not an LFA. LFA has got more screen to it. But this car is a C8. No, that's the Z06. Oh yeah, yeah. The Z06 is a flat plane crank V8. Right. <laughs> My guess is a Hellcat or a GT three fifty R. Hellcat, and it was either that or the the Mustang Cobra. So now Mason's turn to guess. Engine sound A. It's not a car you would have heard much. What is kind it... of engine does it sound like? Aston Martin, like a Vantage. You think it's a V eight? Let me give you a hint, Mason. Imagine two V eights. Okay. A Veyron. It is a Veyron Grand Vitesse. All right, let's hear it. It's a four-cylinder. It's a Miata. <laughs> it's a Miata. <laughs> I put it next to its direct competitor in the Veyron. Yeah. Direct competitor. <laughs> okay. Is round three back to me? No, this one actually has... I should have had it go, go the other way because this one has to be Mason. Okay. Oh. Okay. Feel free to skip ahead and see why. Let me guess the sound <laughs> three. It's a V8, mm-hmm. a cross plane. Mm-hmm. It sounds too deep to be like a coyote. Mm-hmm. It could be an LS. My like answer? Camaro SS. Okay. It's actually a 2014 Charger RT. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it's the same color as mine. I did. I picked a picture that's the same color. <laughs> that exhaust sounded not exactly like mine. All right, what about this one? All right. <laughs> is it a V8? It is a V8, yeah. I'll tell you, when I heard this, I recognized it immediately. I was like, that is definitely exactly what that is. Because I've worked on it enough to know, like, it, that's exactly what that is. Such a crap car. Is it a Cuda? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You didn't get the Charger or the Cuda. I thought for sure you'd get the Cuda. Because when I heard the rumble at the end of that, I was like, that's a dead giveaway. I was pulled it from someone else with a 340. With a 340? Okay. Stock 340. <laughs> Logan gave it away when he's like, it's a crappy car. I mean, it's a good looking car. <laughs> this one I specifically went and took your photo <clears throat> of your car. All right, guess the car. I want, I want to guess from each of you. This is not a hard one. I did not make this difficult. Okay. I said go. Caterham. Caterham. I don't know the name of it. <laughs> Catherine, right? Is that what it is? It's a Catrum. Catrum. It has like the open wheel well. That's the brand. Uh, What's the car name? The Old English Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Caterham 7. I even included part of the 7 on the grill oh. in the picture. <laughs> All right, next one. Challenger. Challenger. Yeah, yeah, I figured all I had to do was with the gas cap. I gave more of the car, and I was like, if I just zoom in on the gas cap, that's plenty. All next right, next one. one. Uh, Bel Air. In what year? 59. 
57? 57 is exactly right. Ooh. And I love that pillar list, like the, the no bill, no B pillar behind the, the front door. So cool. Super safe. I was yeah. just going to say, it's probably it's very, smart. very safe. Yeah, these things are horrible. Uh, power Dodge wagon. Dodge D1, D100 or something. It yeah. is a power wagon. 1944 Dodge power wagon. I, I intentionally zoomed in on the most iconic part of yeah. each car. That side tire is so cool. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, I love the power takeoff yeah. in the front, so you can pull this up to like a like an artillery oh. battery and then yeah. like or a, a mill or whatever. And just the engine running, you can shift it so that the engine delivers power out the front of the engine instead of out the back to the tires. That's cool. Logan knows this one. Gosh, yeah, I'm like some Volvo guess or something. Yeah, Volvo 240 sedan. It is a Volvo 240. I knew if I showed the headrest, he would know exactly what it is. Yeah. Wow. 1988 Volvo 240. All right, I feel better. I did pretty good on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what we got. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week. Got a lot of fun news this week. Um, yeah. Anything else to add? Yeah, I'm sure people are going to light me up over adapters again, but whatever. Yep. Or like how wrong you were about... Uh, yeah, like called the wrong cars, the yeah. wrong days. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got roasted. That's fine. <laughs> I, I'm, for my own sanity, I don't even read my. I, I started reading the comments and I was like, "This is not helpful," so I just stopped. I'm not. <laughs> Go on. Hold it. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll have another video out soon with the recent car show that we went to. We had some pretty good interviews there with um, people who owned cars that we featured in this episode, actually. So that'll be fun to watch, and uh, then we'll see you in our next one. Bye. Bye.